to welcome all of you to our Love Over Fear concert tonight. Um, but before we begin, we kind of just wanted to share some housekeeping guidelines. Uh, for folks that don't know, the bathroom is out in the lobby. Um, so in case you have to go to the bathroom really quick before we start, feel free. Um, and then also, uh, just to be mindful of the performances tonight, as well as our artists, as well as the people that you're next to, to please silence or even vibrate your phones. Um, we want to kind of just be present with everybody here and be in community, so please respect that. Um, also, there will be professional photography within the audience, but also be mindful and please refrain from flash photography as well, just to be respectful of the artists that are performing. So thank you. And we have our uh, program for tonight online. So all of you should have received one of these postcards when you came in. On the back, there's a QR code that says tonight's program. So you can open the camera on your phone and just hover it over the QR code. A website will pop up, click on the website and it will take you to our online program. If you're having trouble accessing it or you didn't get a postcard, we're creating beloved community tonight. So reach over to your neighbor, see if they could help you or you could scan their code. <laughs> but enjoy the show. And so we'll be getting started in just a couple of minutes. But yes, so stay seated and get excited. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
till we march with the torch. We gon' run with it now. We done going back. We done gone hundreds of miles from dark roads, heroes to become a hero. Facing the league of justice, his power was the people. Enemy is legal. The king became regal. Saw the face of Jim Crow under the wall. He wrote the biggest weapon is for us to save peace. We bleed, but the music is what we bleed through. Somewhere in the pit, found an epiphany, and now I write the wrongs in history. No one can win the war individually. It takes the wisdom of the elders and young people's energy. Welcome to the storm we call victory. The coming of the Lord, my eyes have seen the glory. Well, tickets and wanted to be here right now, um, but at the moment are risking arrest 
the Oakland Federal Building and the largest Jewish protest, uh, pro-Palestinian protest of Jewish people. There's over 700 people risking arrest. They still haven't come out yet, but we're hoping that some of them will still be able to join us, like our board chair. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to recognize that and to just name what it means for you all to be here, for us to be here and to be in song and re nourishing our souls when we know people's lives are, are, are threatened at this very moment. And that we can commit ourselves in this time of war and fear mongering, that we can commit ourselves to maintaining our own humanity and the humanity of others as we seek to save lives and to create a world of peace. So it's fitting tonight that we begin our program with a Palestinian American poet, Dima Shihabi, who has been nominated several times for the Pushcart Prize and has been an awardee of the Northern California Book Award. She writes often on the themes of a poet and an artist living in exile and the impacts of war. Let us welcome Dima. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. It means a lot. Thank you to the Interfaith Movement for Human Integrity and to board member Madame Hajij Bata for your work for freedom and integrity. I am a believer in time's temporality and what's happening today in Palestine is both an affirmation of the knowledge that has been passed on to us by our elders who first experienced the Nakba, and yet it reaches past our elders and imparts a certain knowledge to us from our ancestors who were indigenous and existed on Palestinian earth for millennia prior to this moment. So let us always insist on the beauty, dignity, and longevity of our people. The past also offers glimpses for a liberatory, unassailable future where Palestinian freedom is inextricably tied with every freedom. Recently, I was astounded by something my aunt who lives in Gaza said to me in a moment of clarity through a WhatsApp message, away from the necropolitics of Israel and the United States. She said this, Alhamdulillah, ahna min al-mazlumin, mish al-zalmin, which literally translates Thank God we are from the oppressed and not from the oppressor. Wow. Her statement erupted like a volcano in my heart because of its insistence not just on righteousness, but also tenderness in its refusal to allow monstrous violence to transform her. My uncle, who sings to me from across phone lines and distances, sits in a sunlit room in the tiny lull between bombings and says, we are here, we are fine, our faith in God is strong, and remember, we live in you. Amen. To read poetry now for you, it's so much like a luxury to me, something I can't hold on to for too long, but I, I will read a few poems. One is called Migrant Earth. This is a poem for Gaza. So tell me what you think of when the sky is ashen, Mahmoud Darwish. I could tell you that listening is made for the ashen sky. And instead of the Mu'addin's voice, which lingers like weeping at dawn, I hear my own desire as I lay my lips against my mother's cheek. I kneel down beside her, recalling her pleas the day she flung open the gates of her house for children fleeing from tanks. My mother is from Gaza, but what do I know of the migrant earth as I enter a Gazan rooftop and perform ablutions in the ashen forehead of sky as my soul journeys and wrinkles with homeland? I could tell you that I parted with my mother at the country of skin. 
In the dream, my lips were bruised, her body was whole again, and we danced naked in the street. And no child understands absence past the softness of palms, as though it is praise in my father's palms as he washes my mother's body in the final ritual, as though it is God's pulse that comes across her face and disappears. This next one is called Qasida of Breath. Qasida is the Arabic word for a short lyric poem. The call to prayer at 5 a.m. spreads my fingers over the scars of apple trees, and the smell of sleepy earth in my love's hair makes hummingbirds race into the buds of fuchsia. Not so long ago, the air grew soft when the sun crawled from rock to crop. And I would pray to everything sacred. And I would bow and stare deeply at the earth and walk through old cemeteries to find the dead softly gazing. Sometimes you breathe red poppies over the hills in Palestine, and I see girls with orchards of almond trees in their eyes and old men strolling silently among burned villages. And I can't say how I love my people. And I can't tell my love how to leave our land without weeping. And I can't always love this land. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kayla. Powerful, powerful work. We have a few musicians who are going to have an offering, so we're going to get about 30, 25, 30 minutes of music in a row. And the first who's going to come up to the stage, uh, some call her the songbird of Sonoma County, um, and is, uh, has sung opera all over the world, and jazz, and other styles, and also happens to be my mother. <laughs>
Thank you so much. This next song was written by a really special lady, and her name is Renee Marie. And I just want to say one thing. Ben's probably sorry that I'm on the mic now. Um, you know, I was learning this, and I had to call Benja, and I said, it's a great song, but it makes me cry. It's just like, I can't get through it. It makes me cry. And he said right away, ah! I cry every time I sing that song. <laughs> so, two great things there. I felt like my problem was solved. I, I didn't feel alone. And that is what, you know, this, this alliance is about. I mean, he's a good representative, you know. You, I see you. I'll, I'll cry with you. You know? I gotcha. I gotcha. So, such good work. Such good work. Thank you for being here. Supporting that. So this song is entitled This Is Not a Protest Song.
grace the stage, a tremendous, beautiful, incredible singer, one of the East Bay's finest. You may have seen her on American Idol a handful of years ago, one of the R&B songstresses and one of the great party throwers of the area, the one and only Tori Teasley. <laughs>
There is a golden kingdom in a place you cannot see. There is a golden kingdom living deep inside of me.
by my ignorance. I nearly drowned in comfort's middle ground. But now I take a sin, I take a sin. was never black and white and really there's no gray courage of every heritage i wore against the hate i came to change the life i live not just to demonstrate preparing for a marathon allow until my grave i've been a coward been a silent friend if not for amazing Grace, I'd be so damn ashamed, but here I am, intoxicated by my ignorance. I nearly drown in comfort's middle ground, but now I take a stand one more time. I've been a coward, been a lousy friend. If not for amazing grace, I'd be so damn ashamed, but here I am, intoxicated. By my ignorance, I nearly drowned in comfort, still proud. But now I take a sin, I take a sin. Years old 
My father was detained inside the West County Detention Facility, and I actually met the organization outside that individual. And on a note, that facility was actually closed down in 2018 because of inhumane treatment, as well as the just horrible conditions of the facility. Over the past five years, I have been a part of different campaigns and forms of advocacy work within our organization, including press conferences, lobbying for bills, expanding efforts to close detention facilities, helping to create a zine called We the Youth was actually, um, it's available for purchase in the lobby. If you guys want to get it, I helped collaborate with that. And a little bit about that is actually all the people that contributed to it were youth within our organization who have experienced family separation and the impacts of ICE incarceration. So and we have a lot of good information in there and there's a lot of personal stories and art pieces as well. So definitely check that out after. And I have just been really involved in creating social media posts and videos just to really elevate the stories within our organization and different campaigns that we're a part of. So a little bit about interfaith movement for human integrity. Over the past decade, our organization has served as a critical role within the immigrant rights and anti-incarceration movements. We are influencing California policy and legislation toward equality, winning freedom and deportation defense campaigns to reunite immigrant families, providing direct support and accompaniment for newly arrived immigrants, asylum seekers, and people released from detention. We amplify the voice of directly impacted leaders, including myself and Pedro, who you'll hear from later, closing detention centers, halting new jails, and working for solutions do not, that do not perpetuate harm. We challenge and change harmful and racist narratives with ones that uplift the humanity of each one of us, as well inspire and sustain movements building faith, connection, and partnerships with many of you. I would like to introduce you all to Pedro, who has been a very active advocate and leader within our organization. He truly is just an inspiring individual that I'm really glad to have known all these years, and I'm excited for you guys to hear his story. So let's get a round of applause for Pedro. Good evening, everyone. I hope everybody's having a good time. Um, my name is Pedro. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, I'll start by introducing myself. So I was born in Mexico. Um, my parents brought me when I was seven years old. Um, prior to that, I was being raised by my grandmother. And when she passed, my parents brought me here to the States. Uh, a little bit about myself is that uh, all, after myself, all my siblings were born and raised in Sacramento, California, and all, all of my uh, five nieces. Uh, and so as a teenager, I experienced both. Uh, incarceration for over 15 and a half years and then after that uh, after being found suitable to parole right and be determined determined that I was not a great society uh, by the board of parole hearings um, you know rather than coming home to Sacramento with my family I was transferred to an ICE detention center you know when I had two cars with my beloved family outside waiting for me instead they transferred me to uh, Mesa Verde uh, first Golden State Annex and then Mesa Verde uh, in, in uh, Bakersfield, California. That was another journey, that was another battle, and for the next nine months, I would be there, in there uh, incarcerated, detained. Uh, although I was able to win my legal relief, uh, and I'm here free in my community. <laughs> even as we speak, I'm still seeking a pardon from Governor Newsom, and hopefully that, that gets uh, taken, uh, does take place here in the near future. But now, today, uh, here in my community in Sacramento, I serve, I'm an outreach specialist uh, slash P2 instructor. I serve my community. Uh, I work with the reentry community, serving those that are on parole, and I work for Center for Employment and Opportunities. Uh, I got involved with Interfaith Movement for uh, Human Integrity uh, about a year and a half ago. You know, soon after I was released, um, I, so far I've been in three pilgrimages, uh, with uh, Interfaith, once going out to Angel Island, and just previously was able to come back from the pilgrimage all the way down to the San Diego, Tijuana, uh, Mexican border. Uh, one of the things that I can say uh, about Interfaith movement and how much that has empowered me is that I was able to regain back my voice, a voice that for many years I thought I had lost. Now I get to share my story, and I, you know, I am given that stage to promote change 
and also to support dignity, not detention. Uh, one of the things too, and good values that I'm able to see in interfaith uh, movement is that I was embraced, I was welcomed, I was loved, and I was uh, nurtured. And even to this day, I feel like family. And it's a big family to me. Yes, absolutely. I believe that every human being should be treated with dignity and respect. And I believe that every single human being should be worthy and is worthy of this and deserving to create a better future for themselves and even their families. Uh, it's love over fear and faith over fear as well. Uh, thank you guys for letting me share my story. you all to support our work with the QR code that is on your postcard that you mentioned earlier as well there are donation boxes outside in the lobby so two weeks ago Pedro and I plus 50 other people joined our second statewide pilgrimage a pilgrimage to heal our communities we went to the six remaining ice detention centers in California calling for closure of these facilities and the transformation and healing of our communities the six facilities that we went to were Adelanto, Mesa Verde, Golden State Annex, Ote Mesa, and Imperial. Shut them down. Shut them down, exactly. <laughs> Our journey informed California communities, elected officials, and impacted families about a new opportunity to access funds from recent California legislation. We called the pilgrimage, or the Act Heal, Healthy economy, Economies Adapting to Last. HEAL is a budget initiative passed by the Dignity Without Detention Coalition to provide funds to cities. HEAL allows our communities to divest from immigration detention centers and invest in new industries and jobs. Dignity Without Detention won $5 million in the 2023 budget for HEAL, which will be managed by the California Workforce Development Board over the next three years. Heal is a tool. <laughs> Heal is a tool in the advocacy toolkit to close immigration detention centers permanently by addressing the obstacles of carceral economies. So now we would like to introduce someone that actually created a song for our pilgrimage, which was amazing. This song was written by Francisco Herrera, especially for the pilgrimage, to be a part of our popular theater piece that was shared at every single site, which hopefully you guys have seen on the social media. If you haven't, definitely check out our Instagram. We posted a lot of things in there and also on our Facebook. But yeah, so let's please welcome Francisco. Thank you all to enjoy the rest of the conference. murdered today, tomorrow. 
4,500 Palestinian children been murdered in the last 12 days. In the midst of all this horror created by greed and so many other um, inactivities, we're here in prayer and in song and we are transforming the world from here and throughout because if our body is a hologram of the universe, then the universe is us and we breathe deeply and we sing together healing, sanando, not just as a song we're singing, but as an invocation, as a spell, as a determination, as a dictation, as a command, whatever word you want to use. We're doing it. You believe it? Yes. So imagine yourself in this pilgrimage and walking in the desert. Sanando, vamos sanando. Can you sing that? Sanando, vamos sanando. Very nice. And remember, singing in Spanish just focus on the vowels. Oh, ah, eh. Got it down, I said. Ready? Sanando, vamos sanando. Familias reunificando. Familias reunificando. Haciendo puentes, curando heridas. Haciendo puentes, curando heridas. Creando oficios para prosperar. Creando oficios para prosperar. Y unir la comunidad. English goes. Healing. We are healing. Yeah. 
And you know what surrounds every military base? Free license to murder. Trafficking of human beings. And so many more crimes. But we pay for that 60 cents of every tax dollar. No matter what side of the debate you're in, you're paying for it. I'm paying for it. We're paying for it. And in the 60s, over a million people said, oh, there's this little federal excise tax to my phone bill that goes straight to the military, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia. I will send a letter to my phone company saying, I'll pay the whole bill except for those 75 cents, a dollar fifty, ten dollars. I am not gonna pay it. Over a million people. I, yeah, I did it too. And uh, millions of people said, no, I won't go. Millions of people said, no, I will not participate. And I was in a refugee camp in El Salvador in 1988. And the death squad stopped us and he said, okay, creator, here I am. I'm gonna end up like a little old rag on the side of the road, but when that giving up, surrendering, a word came to me of uh, Gandhi that said, the first step of nonviolence is non-cooperation with evil. So we can do it. And we'll start by singing. It goes like this. Yeah. 
songwriter Diana Gameros, <laughs> who, who I have met and listened to her music for the very first time just over the course of the last few weeks here. She writes beautiful, beautiful music from Central America about the freedom movement and about the love and humanity movement, and I am deeply, deeply in love with her compositions, and I think that you will be as well. Diana is going to do a couple songs, and then there'll be a group song, uh, one last speech, and then we'll send you off on your way. Yes. Diana, you got the floor. those mothers who had to leave their homelands, sometimes with a child in their arms, carrying nothing but their dreams, maybe a little bag in one hand, and on the other, the child. Immigrant mom. 
fathers from Central America living by foot, foot. And on this day, my heart
dance never comes And the dream turns to dust in your hands When the rain turns to floods And the rivers they rise And the spring never reaches your land Oh my soul, don't give up, don't give up when the pain comes again, don't give up. It may take all of us for the killings to stop. Stand together in love, don't give up. Even in the darkest times, our love must stand forever. Even to get late on a uh, Monday night, I want to make sure to have the opportunity to invite the amazing Rabbi Lynn Gottlieb, who has just come from the fight for peace yes. on behalf of one of the great, come on up and join the party. Rabbi Lynn Gottlieb is the, uh, is the president of the board of directors of the Interfaith Movement for Human Integrity. She is a rabbi here in the East Bay community and one of the leaders in the peace and justice movement on the Israeli Jewish side. So glad to have you. What an honor. It is 
so wonderful to end this day with you. To be here in a community that chooses love over fear. Yes. That centers directly impacted people by the, the tremendous violence of these United States, Turtle Island, and says we cannot move forward without the wisdom and the tactics and the courage of people who understand what this violence actually means to bodies, minds, and spirits. And so, even as the President of the United States wants to give another $50 billion <laughs> to military, and 10.6 to Israel, and another 40 to the Ukraine. We stand here tonight and say, we're reaching deep, deep, deep into our pockets, and we are sharing our resources of our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our material resources, and so, I would ask you, whatever you're thinking of giving tonight, please double that. <laughs> double it. Because we need support. There is no organization out there quite like Interfaith Movement for Human Integrity who goes to the front lines here in California and stands in front of federal buildings and detention centers and takes pilgrimages to the inland empire and gathers people together across differences to stop the violence. And we need your support. We need you to, there's many ways you can do this. You can, I don't know what you're supposed to do with this actually. <laughs> but it's a QR thingy. <laughs> and you can put your phone on there, apparently. <laughs> and you can, you can give money that way. Uh, you can also go to the silent auction and you can give money and get something really, really special <laughs> to take home with you. And you can make donations. Yeah. Yes, so please, whatever you were thinking of, give more. Because at this time, we really need more. As we build our movement, we put our resources into this movement. And so, thank you so much for being here. I'm sorry, I'm not quite so, <laughs> I'm a little bedraggled at the moment. <laughs> but we, we together, we can give a lot of everything. And I hope to see you all on the street, standing with us to stop the violence, and to create the beloved community in our day. Thank you. Before we get to our closing song, I want to thank some people. Um, I want to particularly thank all the musicians. They were all extraordinary. The sound guy, extraordinary. Frank Salvage, extraordinary. I hope that, uh, did you need this tonight? I totally needed this tonight. And I hope that we are leaving inspired. So I want to thank the musicians. I hope you all go to them on Spotify, get their music. I want to thank our staff, particularly um, Sarah and Felicia. Their very first event. Staff that's here with Lisa, Danny, Nadia, and Kelly. They'll be out in the lobby later. Our board members, Rabbi Lynn, thank you for all that you do for peace and for justice in the world and for our organization, our small organization as well. And from Aram, who is here in the audience, um, and Sergio, also on our board, who are also here. For our many volunteers who, and our concert sponsors, many of your congregations and organizations co sponsored tonight, for our auction donors. And there's a special activity out in the hallway called Love Over Fear. 
tell us. Tell us a hundred ways that you enact love over fear, that you experience love over it. Because as the song said, we have the power. We are doing it. And together, standing together, we won't, in love, we won't give up. So I hope you can stop by that at the, at the end of the night. So thank you so much. I'm gonna hand it back to the musicians. Okay, my friends, we're going to do a closing song and then let you get off to the rest of your evening. My name is Benjamin Mertz. It's been such an honor and a pleasure to have you all in the space. I'm going to invite all of our musicians to come back onto the stage. Nancy Louise, Tori Teasley, Diana Gameros, and we have Francisco Herrera here. And if I say a Taimani and Minor Islands is still here, you're welcome to come up as well. And that's okay if you have snuck out the back. We're not mad at you. Um, we're going to do, uh, oh, there they are! <laughs> so, this is, uh, we always do civil rights music as a part of this tradition. So this is a piece that says, guide my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race, for I don't want to run this race in vain. And then it says, hold my hands while I run this race, for I don't want to run this race in vain. Somebody find me a C major. And we'll see if we can get beautiful. We'll see if we're mostly in a key. <laughs> Great. Uh, if you know the melody to This Little Light of Mine, it's a similar melody, okay? Oh great, we got a bass in the house. Here's what it sounds like. If you can already figure it out, then just join me. Two, three, and guide my feet while I run this race.